Hello learners, welcome to the studio of NIOS. I am Dr. Asha Singh from Lady Urban College. Our lesson today is play and learning and our topic is creating appropriate environments, environment for children to play. Today we'll talk about uh, the environment in two contexts. One is children are growing at home and then as they grow, they also have transitions to an educational setting, a creche, an anganwadi, or a nursery school. So what are the different ways in which adults can organize the spaces, time for children to play? Now we know that play is anything. Any object can become a play material. The child can take a, um, you know, a glass and say, pop, 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 mum, mum. So this is, but be sure that now you don't know. The child has picked this up. The child may want to throw it. So have appropriate objects in the child's environment. Now, usually in the home, what people do is they child-proof the house. That anything dangerous that or anything they think that the child will touch and get dirty, they move it away. Now, of course, you have to protect the child from dangerous objects. But remember, don't remove or uh, make the space so clean that the child can move about. No, you must have objects. You must have, uh, you know, soft toys because children love to cuddle. This feel is so good. Of course, those are objects specifically for children. But remember, any object in the house can become a play material for children. C currently, there are no spools, uh, no, you know, tape recorders or uh, typewriters with ribbons. When our babies were growing up, if there is too much quiet in the house, go check the typewriter, go check the cassette player because that ribbon pulls out and it's very fascinating for the child, for the this particular object to, it keeps coming out, it keeps coming out, it keeps coming, it's like magic. So, therefore, you know, this kind of behavior helps children to explore, but you don't want your data to get spoiled, you don't want. So, be very careful in how much you allow the child to touch what is important to you. So those are certain precautions to protect your uh, objects and to protect the child from harm. Always ensure that the, the, you know, the objects that children are playing with don't have sharp corners and edges or you know, broken uh, iron stuff. It has to be because the child will mouth. If it's a broken, it'll hurt, his, um, it'll hurt the child's lips. But in the home, have uh, dolls for children to play with or objects can become their play material. So you might buy small little, you know, um, play materials like a gas because children watch, uh, you know, um, their parents cooking. But remember, you may buy the most colorful toys, but the child may want to sit next to you in the kitchen and use the big vessels. You know, it may be a little noisy. But let that happen because the child has proximity with you and the child is also exploring the world. That, you know, very unknowingly, the child is learning light and heavy. So the way you create the environment, the watchful freedom that you give the child helps the child to connect, helps the child to naturally absorb concepts. So this is in the home. You are there to be watchful. You are there to allow freedom. You're there to regulate. In an educational setting, things are different. So you often heard that the nursery school teachers or an anganwadi worker will say, oh, books corner mein hai. This is uh, the doll's corner. So have a doll's corner because that's very, very appealing to the child. Because again, the, that also helps in connecting home to school. That this is not a new place. This is a familiar place. They have objects. So the objects become comforting to the child. Of course, um, the way the child will be, uh, you know, pick up and you will also know what kind of people, uh, what kind of exposures the child has had. That there is fast work, there is slow action, peaceful action. So a doll's corner is for the child to express, to feel comfortable, but also for you to learn something about what the child has seen, what the child talks, what children talk and what they, uh, actions they do also tells us about what, uh, what is the inner state of the child. So by watching children at play, you can also contribute to the child's well-being by altering the program. You must have little books, 
uh, for the child to see. Now you'll say, small babies, they don't know how to read, but they're getting familiar. And usually there are picture books with one word. So that helps the child to know. In a world of today, print is very important. So just letting children, sometimes read the book to children, sometimes let now every child will pick up a book. So there must be books in the environment. There must be play objects. You could have a storytelling corner. That today tell me story of the pigeons. Why is this there? So the child goes and brings because they're used to it. They also know that we can do this. There can be another story about the birds. There can be another story about Tanya who's come to visit. So in an educational setting, the child may just go and stand, Tanya, Tanya, that means the child wants to know. So if there are designated spaces, children also associate that now I can do artwork. There, of course, you must have a basket full of crayons, some paper. Uh, occasionally, you can also have um, you know, water play, finger painting. So those are things that you can create to stimulate children's play. But having designated corners gives a sense of continuity to the child. So a library corner, a quiet corner, which can also be used to regulate behavior. Sometimes if a child has been, um, you know, very naughty and troubling others, sometimes children get into this mood. So, okay, let's go to the quiet corner and let's do some painting. Remember, not making the calm corner or the quiet corner as the punishment zone. You can do it in a different way. I think we need, but, uh, you know, adult tendency, now we need to go to the quiet corner. The child knows that's my punishment. So, remember, the moment your tone becomes like that, say, no quiet, calm corner. Therefore, let's go there. Let's do some painting. So it's the spaces you create, the attitudes you have that creates environments conducive for play, which will help us to provide children opportunities to express, be creative and make connections in the world. Thank you.